on that? Yeah, I think the company is still growing. Our pipeline is still growing. We made a strategic decision to say stop growing pipeline and implement the projects we've got. We currently sitting with a secured pipeline in excess of 19 billion rand that we want to bring to the market over the next five to six years. Yeah, no, first of all, I think just congratulations on another spectacular set of results in, in a sector that I think is, is very difficult to operate in. And I mean, that perhaps leads to my, my first question. I, I, I looked at it, I mean, roughly from what I can tell, about a third of the revenue is coming from government projects. Uh, obviously, you know, some you know, other, other people working with government have had huge amounts of issues. What, what are you doing that, that seems to make this, this segment work for you? I think there's two things we do. Firstly, we like being the landowner. Mm -hmm. We like working with government, not for government. Mm -hmm. As the landowner, we can decide whether we work with private sector or public sector and when. So when you go mm -hmm. through the cycles leading up to elections, post-elections, you can decide who you work for. I think the second thing we do is we uh, like the turnkey approach. As landowner, we are the contractor, we are the developer. Mm -hmm. So we can come into the market a lot cheaper than some of the competitors where there's three or four um, people taking profit in the value chain. Uh, just talking about new developments, being a landowner, you're going into the burial business. Uh, that's quite interesting. Tell us how significant is that going to be and how much investment are you plowing into this particular venture? We see a big opportunity there. Currently, we don't see it as core business as yet. Um, the, it all originated when we looked at our um, pipeline. We say we've got some land that's not available, developable uh, for residential use. And so what do we do with this? When we started looking at alternatives, we said this is something that we would like to look at. We decided to do the first one off our projects and not muddle the waters with something that's currently working. But we see huge um, development opportunities there. This is something we want to do in partnership with the government again. And we're not going into competition with government. We say this is another service delivery expect aspect that we would like to have a look at. Mm. Just want to have a follow-up question for that. Just looking at some of the commentary that did come out, and these were reports prior to uh, the results that came out with regards to that particular uh, mm. burial uh, adventure that you're going on. It said Calgram 3 is working on various financing options uh, to make this affordable to a wide spectrum of the community. So is this correct? And what do you mean by making this affordable to widespread of uh, widespread uh, of community? Is this you? going to be playing into um, having a financing role into this? Yeah, we're looking at it and we're just starting up the final agreements with an um, insurance house to, that will partners on that, looking at financing options and insurance options to, to fund these um, acquisition of stands. Currently you can't buy stands in Gauteng, mm -hmm. you can't reserve stands. Mm -hmm. So in order to buy this, we don't expect clients to, to pay for the stand, so we're looking at financing options, how to, to finance the acquisition of a, a site. Okay. Um, yeah, and then just, just if we can just go back to the sort of the property aspect mm -hmm. of, the, of the company. I mean, I, I know analysts have been for, for ages saying that your property portfolio is way undervalued on your balance sheet. And that's sort of, mm -hmm. I think, it, you know, the last numbers that I looked at, it was like it, it contributes about four rand uh, of NAV to your share, yeah. and it should be around 10 rand. So your share price should be a lot mm -hmm. higher. And I think that's a lot where the story comes from. I mean, obviously, with, with the importance of that property underpin, um, what, what is your view of property rights in South Africa going forward? I mean, is, is that a major concern for you? Uh, how are you treating it? Uh, and you go, going forward? No, we don't see it as a major concern. Currently, the, opp the opportunity is there. Um, we're still in a, a society where uh, ownership is key, where people would like to own houses. Brick and mortar is still important. Mm -hmm. We're looking at alternative building systems. Brick and mortar is still what everyone wants. Mm -hmm. If you ask people what they want, everyone wants a big house on a big stand. Mm -hmm. The reality is we can't afford that. So sectional titles have been coming to the fore uh, with densification mm -hmm. and for a simple reason that people can't afford what they really like. So entry into the market as by way of sectional title and rental is, op is uh, just an alternative for people what they can afford compared to what they would really like to, to buy. Mm. Alternative models, uh, you've also decided to go off the grid. Uh, this is for one of your business uh, areas. Uh, just tell us about some of the challenges uh, that you have encountered, what you've learned. Going off the grid sounds attractive, but I'm sure there must have been some challenges there. I think I was just... Um, Qualify that one. Going off the grid for the cemetery business is a lot easier. The, your requirements for electricity is a lot lower. If you look at alternatives and with regards to energy, we're looking at alleviating pressure off the grid. Going off the grid is not that easy. If you need to run an office and you need to run security lights and security beams and that, it's a lot easier. With regards to uh, the integrated developments, we're still reliant on electricity. Yes, we do make use of um, uh, heat pump systems as alternatives. We're making use of um, gas installation, reticulations in the project for cooking and he water heating. So these are alternatives, but going off the grid is not something that's on the cards for now. I think taking pressure off the grid is a lot more 
or a better description of what we're trying to achieve on the integrated side of the of the business. I think there's also there's also been uh, just in construction perhaps generally. I mean, there's been, been a lot written about a skills exit and and the the inability for for some of the construction companies to find uh, you, you know skilled talented labour. Um, I mean, is that something that you guys are facing? I mean, uh, do you have uh, training programs in place? I mean, how how are you handling that? Yes, we've got a, a couple of training programs running, and it is a there is a dire need for training in the sector. I think that's something that's been neglected for a long um, time. Something we need to look at. But there is a lot of expertise still out there in the market. And um, we're currently in the pro process of saying, guys, where do we get these people from and how do we train them? Unfortunately, as we see ourselves as the leader in integrated developments, there's not a lot of companies you can look at and start poaching people from. So you need to retain our own staff and retain the people that with skills and train those to create skills for ourselves. Yeah. You haven't uh, decided to pay a dividend. Um, you've had a very, very good set of results. Uh, just when we speak next time, what can we hold you accountable for? What can we expect from Calgro M3 in the next year? Just with regard to dividend, um, the reason why we didn't declare dividend, we're still a growing company. Um, although our interest cover is coming down, um, there's some good news on the cards, but it's a capital intensive business. We invested 174 million back into new projects for the year that will set the, the platform for growth in the next two years. Um, Dividends is not off the table, but I think for now we, um, the option is to rather retain the cash as a war chest and make sure that we're sustainable and we can get through. Uh, we're still in trouble times. It's, the construction industry is not out of it as yet, and although you can look at a set of re results and say we're sitting on some cash, we need cash to sustain this business. Well, thank you so much for making the time to come in this morning and tell us a bit more about your results. That was Ben Pierre Maladra. He's the Chief Executive of Calgo M3.